Hey, what's happening, YouTubers? We're back with a brand new unboxing video. And tonight's unboxing video is a very special one and unique, uh, mainly because it's from a company I don't normally buy action figures from. I'm, of course, talking about Spin Master. Now, ever since Spin Master acquired the license from Mattel to make DC figures in, like, the 4-inch scale and, like, the other ones, like, 12-inch, like you've seen at Target or Walmart... Uh, none of them really ever piqued my interest because they're more geared towards kids, uh, whereas the McFarlane Toys one is more geared towards collectors. But that changed when I saw this recently at the store. Uh, I didn't know they were going to do uh, the Batman figures from the movie. Now that I think about it, there's only been two movies that have been out since Spin Master acquired the license for the DC figures. It's been Wonder Woman 84 and Zack Snyder's Justice League on HBO Max. So they haven't really had the opportunity to make products for DC movies until now, which is why I wanted to pick these up. And I'm wondering if they're going to continue this trend for like Black Adam, which comes out later this year, or Flashpoint. But anyways, enough about that. Like we always do, let's get started with the box art first. Now since this is a four inch line, the boxes are all pretty similar. So today we're going to be reviewing Batman, Selina Kyle, the Penguin. And then this cool one that I saw was Wingsuit Batman. Um, and you can see all these come with at least three accessories. That's more than you can say for the McFarlane Toys one. No shade thrown, just stating the obvious. Now, if we look at the back of the box, you can see it shows the figure on there. And I kind of think those are digital renders because the figures that are in the package look nothing like that. Uh, especially that penguin one that doesn't look like what's actually in the box right now. All right, enough about all that. Let's go and take a look at these figures and take them out of the packaging. I'm going to be going through these one by one. Now, because there's four of these things, I'm not going to be doing a jump cut where I'm going to move the box to the camera and get them out. Uh, let's start first with the Batman figure. All right, so here's Batman out of the packaging. And let's take a look at the accessories he comes with first. Uh, it says it comes with like this mystery card. And I think this is a common thing that comes with these Spin Master uh, DC figures, maybe Batman specifically. I'm not too familiar. Let me know in the comments below if you all collect these. But uh, it's like some mystery card or some uh, evidence card. Uh, and honestly, it was a pain in the ass taking this thing out of the sleeve. But basically, here's the clue. And then if you put it in there, you can see it's a Batmobile. Um, I know this is geared towards kids, but even without this little thing, this little window here, if you can't tell that's a Batmobile, I don't know what to tell you, yo. <laughs> but I get it. It's a nice, cool little gimmick for the kids to to, to use when they buy this and the other accessory it comes with is cool it's like it's got this grappling gun uh, i don't know why they made it orange uh, i probably would have made this black to match the rest of his accessories but i have a feeling the reason why they made this red was because of dc's uh no gun mandate on all their dc products that's why you don't see guns with dc figures anymore whether it's a funko pop a mcfarlane or even these uh, spin master things so i get why they colored it uh red i would have had it black though but i understand it is what it is and the other thing it comes with is like this chest plate that clips on which i'm not understanding the significance of this like like that's how it's supposed to go like what is he supposed to do just show he's got an enlarged chest like i don't is that supposed to be a shield or what uh, <laughs> it, it's an interesting piece, but the cool thing about this chest piece though, is it's actually more detailed than the one that's actually, uh, molded on his body. The last thing I wanted to show was this Batarang, which is really detailed. Actually, that's pretty good for a, a kid's toy, this little Batarang. And I'm wondering if this will fit with the McFarlane one and just to try it out. Yeah, it looks like actually it'll go in the open hand sculpt so not bad if nothing if you get one of these you guess the batarang's universal you can use it on your mcfarlane one all right now let's take a look at the figure itself and i'm not gonna spend too much time on this because it's just a basic figure and i've got three other ones to look through um but first things first i do want to point out the cape it's using like a plastic cape actually no, i think it was a soft good one like i don't know i'm not a soft goods connoisseur like my man fobster 360 but let me know in the comments below i think this is a cloth goods cape uh, and then also, I was seeing how far the articulation would go. It's not much. It doesn't really go 90 degrees. It's single jointed, so that's about as high as it can go in terms of the uh, elbow range. Uh, it can look, looks like there is a little swivel right there on the elbows. Uh, it does have your shoulder swivel. Uh, the head can go from side to side. I don't think it can go up and down or barely. Uh, there isn't a diaphragm cut or waist cut or a yeah, there isn't a waist swivel either. Uh, but the cool thing about this was just interesting. So I noticed this right before I actually took it out of the box. I was like, oh, these things have thigh swivels? Like, what the hell? How is there thigh swivels on here but not McFarlane ones? Come on, man. 
Uh, and also there is a boot cut right there, so you can swivel it at the boot. And it's single jointed knees, and that's about as high as it can bend, or as far as it can bend. So it's not bad. Um, articulation is pretty basic, but yeah, it's not bad for a, a basic figure. Uh, I do wish they would have added a waist cut right there, so you could have a waist swivel. The cape's not bad either. Uh, the head sculpt is, well, <laughs> I wasn't expecting like photo real tech quality, but man, it looks like he's got like a five head going on, dude. All right, next one we're going to take a look at is Selena Kyle. I just want to point out it's interesting that they branded this Selena Kyle instead of Catwoman. All right, so here is Selena Kyle, a.k.a. Catwoman, out of the packaging. And first, let's start with the evidence sheet. This one's a little bit better. Um, at first glance, you're like, what the hell is that? But uh, you can kind of see the two wheels. And what's this? Oh, snap. It's motorcycles. As far as her other accessories goes, she comes with the whip, which is like a classic Catwoman uh, weapon. And then also, she comes with a knife, so yeah, they got Selena Kyle ready to go. She's about to shank someone. The next set of accessories is an interesting one. Um, she comes with mitts, I guess. Or I guess these are supposed to be cat clawing gloves because they look sharp, kind of. <laughs> but the way that this is engineered, it looks like they're supposed to port into her hand like this if I can actually get the damn thing in there so I, I don't know is if that's supposed to be how it is like uh, I, yeah I don't think I'm going to be posing with the the figure with these oven mitts on that looks kind of stupid to me I'm not even going to bother putting the other one on uh, but let me know what you all think would you be posing Selena Kyle like this <laughs> like oh my god um, you gotta, you gotta love the effort though by Spin Master. But when taking a look at the actual figure, this is a nice one. Uh, <laughs> obviously it's not photo real tech, but the likeness to Zoe Kravitz is kind of there. It's not bad. The detailing, the hair sculpt, uh, is pretty good as well. So they did a good job in that application as well in molding it. Um, in terms of articulation, she does have a better range. Like the elbow can go a little bit higher than Batman's to almost where it is a 90 degree angle. Uh, the legs are the same way. And you can also bend, and also there is a swivel at the knee. There is no boot cut like on Batman. Uh, there is a swivel at the elbow and a shoulder swivel as well. But yeah, still no ab crunch or waist swivel. All right, next we're going to take a look at Penguin. Here is Penguin out of the box, and his clue, or evidence, I'm sorry, is actually pretty good because at first glance you're like, what the hell is this? It's just scribbles. But, uh-oh, what's this? It's a map of Gotham City. I was initially going to say New York, but whatever. It's the same thing, right? But uh, this one was actually pretty good, too. So it seems like it's getting better and better. Now let's take a look at his accessories. And, yo, his accessory set is probably the best one out of all of them so far. Uh, of course, you have the orange gun, which I explained earlier for the Batman figure. And then we have his umbrella because, of course, he's Oswald Cobblepot. He's the Penguin, if you didn't know that already. Uh, and then lastly... This is awesome. I, this accidentally opened up when I was taking this out of the packaging. But here's his briefcase. And just to show y'all, this is really dope. My man has got stacks. The penguin is loaded, yo. And check this out. Look at the detail that Spin Master put on this. They got Ben Franklin's face on them bills, yo. That is amazing. For a $9 figure to have this many accessories and that attention to detail, that's awesome. And also I just want to point out, not even the Marvel Legends, was it Stiltman or Frogman? One of them came with a brief, it came with a briefcase, but not even that had like the Ben Franklins on there. So shout outs to Spin Master. This is a really well done accessory set. All right, now let's take a look at the Penguin figure. And this looks nothing like Colin Farrell. Well, I guess to be fair, how he looks in the movie looks nothing like him as well. Uh, same type of articulation that you saw on Selena Kyle, Catwoman, and Batman. Uh, his articulation is just like Batman's. It really can't go up that much for a single joint of elbow. Uh, has your shoulder swivel and then also heads tilt side to side. Actually, this one can look more, uh, there's more movement up and down than the other figures. Uh, leg can go out that far and then knees can, oh, well, can barely bend actually. Uh, but there is rotation on the, there is a knee rotation right there. And also thigh swivel. I think they missed the opportunity to add a waist swivel, especially right there. But uh, I think, uh, you know, it's for budget reasons. It's a kid's line. So I understand why they wouldn't put articulation there. But overall, this was a pretty solid figure and a pretty solid accessory set.
And not gonna lie, when I initially took this figure out of the box and I saw the face, he was kind of giving me Sam Burke vibes from Sam and Twitch from Image Comics. And for those of you who don't know, Sam and Twitch are characters from the Spawn universe. Uh, but yeah, let me know in the comments below. What do you think? Doesn't he kind of look like Sam Burke from Sam and Twitch? All right, last but not least, we're going to take a look at Wingsuit Batman. Here's Wingsuit Batman out of the packaging, and let's take a look at the evidence sheet first. What we got here? So we got a Batman mask and... What is that? The World Series trophy and some other stuff. Let's put it through the scanner. What do we got? What do we got? What do we got? All right, so we got a Batman mask and a... Is that a gun? Oh, it's the thing that goes around his wrist. So like the gauntlets. Awesome. And when we take a look at the accessories, it's ironic. I didn't do this on purpose, but uh, it's funny because his accessory set is just a concoction of everything you've already seen. So we've got the gun from Penguin set. We have the knife from Selina Kyle, a.k.a. Catwoman. And then we have the Batarang from the uh, first Batman figure I opened up. Now, my educated guess is telling me the reason why they just recycled the accessories you've already seen is because... This one's a little bit different than the other figures. He's got kind of like a gimmick. Um, he's got, it's the wingsuit Batman. So basically, he has a wingsuit that's clipped onto his, uh, his body, uh, like through these rings. And then you just expand them out, just like that. <laughs> um, and my guess is that's where most of the budget went into uh, for the accessories. That's why they just threw those in there. But the only thing is, I wish they would have just made just this part clip on just from the wrist because... I don't really like the legs being like that because then it just looks weird. Um, but I can you can easily just remove it like that to have it like flow like like that's how I would have had it. But it is what it is. And another thing I noticed the thigh on this figure I think is misaligned. Like when you look at it, I'm not sure if it's supposed to be like that for all these Batman figures that are the wingsuit version or it's just mine. But it looks like it got misaligned. But it's all good. And it still has the same standard articulation you saw in the other Batman figure. Uh, the reason why I was really looking forward to this figure is because there was one that they came out with back in the day during the Tim Burton Batman movie uh, for Batman Returns. And they had a figure similar to this. Um, it basically, I think you squeeze the legs and the arms collapse out. But basically he has the wings attached to his arm, which is why like when I picked this up, it kind of... Uh, it was kind of a nostalgia trip. It brought me back to those days. So that's why I wanted to pick this up. And that's why I was looking forward to this one the most out of all four of them. And just for size comparison, here they all are standing next to each other. I think they scale well. You know, I think in terms of Selena Kyle's height, Batman, Penguin, they all scale pretty well. And since I don't really collect uh, three and a quarter inch or four inch figures anymore, here's a size comparison next to the only other four inch figure I have in my display now. It's the, uh, the Incredible Hulk from Avengers 1. It's the Gamma Smash Hulk. I think that was the gimmick for this one. But uh, yeah, I mean, Hulk doesn't scale well at all with them because that's Hasbro and that's Spin Master. Whatever. I'm going to take off with all the cash and you can't stop me. Sure I can because I am vengeance. I am Batman and I have this Nerf gun. Well, I have this umbrella. And I'm going to stop you both with my oven mitts. Oven mitts? That's the best you got. You can't stop me. Ah, 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 ah. Oh shit, that's the Joker. Right, some overall thoughts on these figures is I like them. You know, the fun factor is definitely there, especially like the gimmicks they throw in there, like these like little evidence cards and stuff. It's fun. So I understand that these are geared towards, you know, a different demographic, not collectors. They're more so geared towards kids. But as collectors, as adult collectors, we also are kids at heart. And I think if you pick up maybe one or two of these, you'll definitely have fun uh, posing it around and using the gimmicks on there because it's pretty neat. Uh, the one I'd recommend the most is probably the Penguin figure because the accessories is insane. And also the wingsuit Batman and then Selina Kyle and then the regular Batman uh, because his, his accessories is kind of whack. I don't understand that chest piece. But I do like them. Um, I'm not expecting like McFarlane level quality sculpt. But like I said, the fun factor is definitely there. Uh, it, it's kind of a nostalgia trip for me because it reminds me of like those figures we used to pick up as kids that Kenner used to release for Batman movies, but uh, they're fun. And the face sculpts aren't entirely bad. Like that one looks like Zoe Kravitz. Obviously it looks nothing like Colin Farrell and the Batman head sculpt is also questionable. But other than that, <laughs> this figure line is really nice. And I hope they do continue making movie ones because I'll probably pick those up from Spin Master. But that's about it. I don't think I'll pick up their other DC figures. I did see they had a Superman and Darkseid 2-pack, which looked really cool. 
but uh, not enough for me to want to like delve into the line. And I don't think this will replace anyone's seven or six inch DC collection, but it's still a nice variety and option as well. But yeah, let me know your thoughts in the comments below, YouTubers. Let me know what you think about this figure line. Are you going to be picking it up or have you already seen these at your store and passed on them? Uh, but yeah, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And uh, kudos to Spin Master. I think they did a fantastic job with this. Uh, they're a company that's not really well known in the toy community because, like I said, they're more so geared towards like the kids section of the action figures. But they did a fantastic job with these. So yeah, bravo and kudos to Spin Master. But uh, leave a comment below. Let me know what you all think about this figure. And like always, if you like what you see, be sure to hit that like button. If you haven't already yet, subscribe to the channel. Go ahead, subscribe. Thanks for watching. I think about it now. It's just Wonder Woman 84 and Josh Snyder. <laughs> Josh Snyder? What the fuck? <laughs> Zack Snyder, you idiot.